you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the knowledge. We thank you for the wisdom, and we thank you for the understanding, Father God. We pray that we will continue to grow in your word. In Jesus' name, forever learners of the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, tonight's word is called Exercise Your Authority by Binding and Loosing. Amen. And last week, Minister Cynthia, she did a teaching on binding and loosing, which was excellent. So this is like a follow-up, too. Binding and loosing, and we'll continue uh, to teach on binding and loosing because this is a house of deliverance. Amen? God wants us delivered. Amen? That's our DNA. The D stands for deliverance. The N stands for newness. Because when you get delivered, you become new. And the A is our authority. Because we walk in kingdom ador authority daily. Amen? That's in our DNA. Deliverance, newness, and authority. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about just what does, what does binding and loosing mean. And the topic tonight is exercise your authority. Anyone in here like to exercise? I love to exercise. I know I know not a lot of people like to exercise, but I do. I, I love to exercise, you know. We have to have healthy bodies, not just a healthy mind and a healthy spirit, but also a healthy body too, amen? So exercise your authority by binding and loosing. Authority means the power or right to give orders, to make decisions, and enforce obedience, amen? And we as a believer, God has given us power and authority to do those things. Right? You think when you go to a job, you have your boss. Your boss is your authority figure. But in the kingdom of God, God has given you power and authority. So you are a leader in the kingdom as well. Whether you have a title or not, God has given you all power and authority over our enemies. Amen? Amen. So in the word, the word exercise means to perform or practice in order to develop, improve, or display a specific capability or skill amen and we we want to improve our authority we want to practice it we want to practice binding and loosing so bind to bind something means to restrict restrain limit its ability to function to lock to tie down to hold so it that should say can't, so it can't operate when you bind something it cannot operate when you lose something, that means to unlock, release, to permit, free something up. And when we, we lose something, we're giving it, we're allowing it to oper operate. We're giving it an opportunity to operate. But when we bind something, we are stopping. We are taking authority back for it to operate. Amen. So God has given us kingdom authority. God has given us kingdom authority to the church. Amen. So we are going to go to Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew and we're going to start. We're going to start with chapter 16. So Matthew chapter 16. We're going to read uh, verses 13 through 20. So Jesus was talking to his disciples. And, and this was, he was talking to Peter. So it says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. And others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So they just call Jesus all types of names. <laughs> he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. So he confessed that Jesus was the Christ. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Amen. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. 
and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Amen. We go back to verse 18. It says, I'll build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. The, the word Hades means the place of the dead. It also means the power of death. And Jesus is saying death cannot destroy the church. Amen. And death cannot keep the church from going forward. Amen. Jesus said that I will build my church. Amen. And he said that in the gates of Haiti, so death will not prevail against it. And I give you the keys. What are the keys? The keys is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I give you the keys of the kingdom. And guess what? The keys of the kingdom is the gospel. It allows us to introduce men and women to Christ and his salvation. And then that's how you build up the church. You build up the church with the knowledge and the word of Christ. What are we doing right now? We're studying the word. Who is sitting here now? The church. The, the sons and daughters of Christ. Amen. So, so Jesus said, I give you the keys. I'm giving you the keys. Death has no power. I'm going to build my church. And then he said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Amen. So, so Jesus is saying, you have kingdom authority. It's our right and our responsibility. God wants us to help one another. He wants us to build each other, right? This is what iron sharpens iron. Study to show yourself approved, right? So I have this book. This is called The Secrets to Deliverance. It's Alex, written by Alexander Pagani. I see his last name right, Pagani. This is a good book, y'all. So I'm, I'm, I'm digesting it slowly because it's very, it's deep. It's deep. I'll share some revelation to what he says in this book, too, about binding and loosing. And also um, John Eckhart's book, too, um, about prayers that root demons. Uh, there's a lot of binding and loosing in this book, too. So God has already, to Jesus told us we have the keys to the kingdom. And whatever we bind and loose, it shall be done. But guess who's got to do the binding and loosing? We do. He said, whatever you bind. He didn't say, I'm going to bind it for you. Whatever you bind, whatever you lose, you have to do the work. And guess what? We have to use our words. Amen? Because our words have power. Amen? We have power of death and life in the tongue. Amen? So, so Jesus tells us, you had a keys. Just like if you're at home, no one can, can just get in your house unless they have a key. Amen? You got to protect your house, right? When you go to sleep, when you're in your house, you lock the door, right? No one can just come in your house. They got to have the keys. Amen? So Jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom. Amen? We got those spiritual keys. Amen. If you are not in Christ, you're not going to know what that even means. If you're not a believer, you don't know the word, you're like, what is she talking about? The spiritual keys. Amen. We know the gospel. We know the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18. Now, we just read in Matthew ch chapter 16 how Jesus said we have, you know, we have the keys to the kingdom and whatever we bind on, bind on earth and whatever we loose on earth. We're going to read it again. It's in Matthew chapter 18 again. So this one we're going to verses 15 through 20. It says dealing with a sinning brother says, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, 
Take with you one or two more, that by mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Amen? And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Basically, just let him go about his way. You know, God, he wants us to make peace with people. He is telling us if there's an issue, go and fix it. Amen? When you have an issue with someone, you're either going to go fix it or forget about it. But we shouldn't just blow things off and forget about it. We need to go try to fix it. Verse 18 says, Assuredly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there in the midst of them. Amen. God wants us to come together. In the kingdom, there's unity. Amen. We're stronger together. Amen. When we go through things in life, you need someone to cry on. You need someone to listen. You need someone to encourage you. You need someone to pray for you. You need someone to lift you up. Amen. Yes, we go to God. Yes, we pray. Yes, we pray in the spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit fill us. Yes, but we are surrounded by people. I always tell my kids, like, the strongest thing you'll have on this earth are relationships with people. You are never just going to be surrounded on this earth just by yourself. You're not, you're not on the earth by yourself. You are surrounded by people, whether you're at the store, the grocery store, the restaurant, getting gas at work, at church. You are going to be surrounded by people. And so you have to know how to interact with people. Amen? And God's word tells us to go fix it. Make it right. Go to your brother alone. Then if that don't work, take a couple witnesses. Because then maybe they can give you some clarity or help out the situations. They can give you some sound counsel, right? And then if that's not working, take it before the church. We don't really have a lot of issues like that. I don't, you know, I can't recall some issues where they were like, you know, me and Apostle Rose, we got to talk about this to the church, you know. So, but that is, I'm pretty sure some people may do that, though. But it's not done often. Because I do believe that mature believers can solve it one-on-one. -on -one. If you are a true believer of Christ, you know God forgives us. We have to be forgiven. So if you are a mature believer of Christ and you have offended someone or they offend you, we should be able to talk it out and solve it without having a whole bunch of people in the mix and then the whole church in the mix too. Amen. But verse 18 it says it again. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I just want to talk about that a little bit. We do need to make sure that we we exercise our authority. Amen. If 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 Jesus says we can bind and loose things, we we have the power and authority to do that. We need to use it. When you exercise, you can't just do it once. You can't just do it once every other week or once a month. You know, those of you who don't like to physically exercise, you might work out once every blue moon, you know. But spiritually, we need to exercise our power and authority often. Amen? Amen. So, in this, this book, um, the enemy tries to operate in, in our temples, right? Which is our body. The enemy tries to operate in our lives. And we, we have to not allow this, right? Because the enemy, he tries to contaminate our temple. He tries to... Uh, make us unclean. He tries to pollute our mind. And we know the temple is the human body. And the word house is used in the Bible over 2,000 times. Our, our house our, is our temple. It's where the Holy Spirit lives. Amen. And so 
We have to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us when we're in error. Amen. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to purge us from any unclean thing. And if, you know, the enemy is operating our life, it has legal access. So we have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal how is this operating. And then we have to confront it. Amen. Amen. So we have to know that we have authority and we have to enforce it. Because evil spirits are not just going to leave on their own. We have to make them leave. We have to command them to go. Amen. Amen. And we have to be able to release the, ble the blessings of Christ. And there's a scripture that talks about um, if there's an unclean spirit operating, when you command it to go, and if it returns back, it brings seven more spirits. And then the person will be worse off than before. That's in Matthew 12, verse 43 through 45. So empty spaces always fill up. So if you leave a room empty, it will fill up with something. So once you um, command an evil spirit to go, you have to decree that empty space be filled. So if you command anger to go, you have to fill it with something. You have to fill it with love. You have to fill it with kindness. So if you command something to go, you have to command something to come. So if you bind something, you have to lose something as well. So if we, if we evict a demon, we have to decree that empty space be filled with God's blessings. Amen. And I have a whole list of um, things that God was giving me. So uh, we, if we bind spiritually sleeping believers, we have to lose spiritually awake believers. Amen. So if we bind spiritual trash, we need to lose spiritual fruit. If we bind the foolish things, we have to lose the wisdom of the Lord. If we bind brokenness, we have to lose wholeness. If we bind hate, we have to lose love. If we bind hurt, we have to lose healing. If we bind sickness, we have to lose, lose good health. If we bind sadness, we have to lose joy. If we bind fear, we have to lose faith. If we bind worry, we have to lose peace. If we bind lies, we have to lose the truth. If we bind bad choices, we have to lose good choices. If we bind unrighteousness, we lose righteousness. If we bind darkness, we lose the light. Remember, bind means to not allow this to operate. All this hurt, sickness, fear, worry, we don't want that operating in our lives. We don't want darkness operating in our lives. So if we bind darkness, we lose the light. If we bind being impatient, we lose patience. If we bind evilness, we lose kindness. If we bind disobedience, we lose obedience. If we bind poverty, we lose wealth. If we bind lust, we lose God's desires. Amen. Amen. We have to speak God's blessings and not curses. So if we bind curses, we have to lose blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I also... God also allowed me to read in Isaiah chapter 58. And this was so interesting because this was about um, the Pharisees fasting. And this was, you know, back in the day when the Pharisees used to fast, it used to be very religious. They used to do it not for the right reasons. It was a ritual. Oh, we're fasting because this is what we normally do. This is a practice of ours. And so God was really not pleased with their fasting. And so I'm going to read to you um, Isaiah chapter 58. And you all can go back and read it and study more because it is a lot. It's um, 14 verses. So Isaiah chapter 58, it says fasting that pleases God. So not every fast pleases God. Amen? Because you have to have a clean heart and a pure heart, and you have to do it for the right reasons. Amen? So chapter 58, it says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. So that was... Um, the Pharisees, uh, the Lord was given a command that they should be aware of what they're doing. So, let me see where it says. 
the Lord told the prophet to declare to declare to his people their transgressions and their rebellion against the Lord. So this is uh, God talking to the prophet. It says, verse 2, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation they did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? So the Pharisees are saying, God, we're fasting for you. Why are you not paying us attention? Don't you see my soul? Don't you see me suffering? I'm fasting for you. Don't you see how I'm afflicted? And you're not even doing anything. You're not even doing anything about it. And verse, I'll continue reading from verse 3. In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. God's saying you find pleasure in your own fast. And exploit all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate. So he said, you, you're not even fasting for the right thing. You're not fasting for me. You're debating about the fast. You're complaining. And to strike with the fist of wickedness, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? God is saying, this is, I'm not pleased with this. This is what you're doing, what you want to do. I haven't told you to do that. And then the prophet announced several reasons why the Lord had not responded to their fast. So verse 3, it says, they sought their own pleasure in fasting. Also, they oppressed their slaves in fasting. And also they quarreled and they fought in their fasting. That is not pleasing unto the Lord. So their fasting did not draw them closer to the Lord. And the Lord wanted the kind of fast that seeks to do good to others. So this is what the Lord says. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? So we're on verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens? To let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you are naked, that you cover him, and hide not yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteous shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. He's saying if you would do what I have you do, you would have healing in your life. This would be righteous. If you keep reading on verse 9, it says, Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. But because your fast is not unto me, it's unto yourself. I'm, I don't see it. I don't hear it. It's not acceptable to me. If you look at verse 6, he's saying, loose the bonds of wickedness. That people need to get free. God wants us free. Amen? He does not want us in, he doesn't want us in bondage. He says to undo the heavy burdens. All of us have burdens. He wants to undo it. He wants us to be loose from heavy burdens. God knows every burden that you go through. There's nothing that you go through that he doesn't know about. Amen. Sometimes your kids don't know what you go through. Your parents definitely don't know everything you go through. Your coworkers don't know what you go through. Your friends don't know what you go through. Your church family, they don't always know what you go through. And he don't want us to go through it alone. But God says he knows. He knows all about us. Amen. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows how many calories you eat every day. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. Help us put them donuts down. <laughs> so verse 9 says, when you call, the Lord will answer. When you cry, he'll say, here I am. But we have to do it in righteousness. Amen. Amen. So verse 8, he says, when you do these things, verse six, 6 and 7, he's telling you all the things he wants you to do. 
break the wickedness, undo the burdens, help the oppressed go free, break the yokes, share your bread with the hungry, right? And he's saying when you do this, your light shall break forth like the morning. You all know when you're sleeping in bed in the morning coming, you're like, oh. If you're a morning person, you're like, woohoo, another bright day. I'm ready to go to work. I'm like, oh, Lord, can you just <laughs> there he, uh, keep, keep the curtains closed for a little longer? Let me get five more minutes. But he's saying your, your light, you, God is calling you a light. He said your light shall break forth like the morning. That's how God sees you. Isn't that beautiful? He sees us like a light. He says your light will break forth like morning. The morning light wakes us all up. Amen. And healing will come forth. And you shall go in righteousness. Amen. And God will hear your call. If we keep reading in verse 9. It says, if you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought, and strengthen your bones, and you shall be a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Amen? And those from among you shall build the old waste places, and you shall rise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of the streets to dwell in. Amen. God said you're going to restore some things. Amen. You're going to repair some things. When you fast and you fast and do it the right way. When you do it to help others. When you do it in my name. When you do it in righteousness. He said that God is going to continue guide you. He said I will satisfy your soul. I will strengthen your bones. You will be like a water whose who, who spring does not fail. That's, that's a lot of blessings. God is, just wants to pour out his blessings on us. Amen? When we do things unto God, he just wants to pour his blessings out on us. Praise God. Verse 13 says, If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, he said, you're doing your thing on my day. And call the Sabbath of delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. God is really calling out the selfish, isn't he? He's saying you're doing your thing your own way. You are doing things in your own pleasure. You're speaking your own words. He says, but turn away. Verse 13, turn away. If you turn away from doing it your way. Verse 14 says, you shall delight yourself in the Lord. Amen. And I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. So, so God, he wants us to do things. We can't do things his way and expect the blessings of the Lord. Amen. He tells us what he wants us to bind and loose. Amen. I want to just do some prayers with us. I want to just pray. Amen. And these prayers from this prayer book, they have a lot of key words in them. And I, I was like watching a lot of different uh, teachings about binding and loosing. He was saying that like one, I think it was Pastor Tony Evans. He was saying that we can't just be like, I bind Satan. Because God binds Satan. The Lord does so in Zechariah 3 2 says Satan the Lord rebuke you because who are we L the Lord will fight the enemy for us right amen and then Matthew 4 10 get thee behind me Satan for it is written Luke 4 8 get behind me Satan for it's written I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the heaven that's Luke 10 18 so we, we can loose ourselves from every bond of Satan in the name of Jesus. We have to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. That's Luke 13, 16. Lord, bruise Satan under our feet. We call the Lord to do the work. 
Lord, bruise Satan under my feet. That's Romans 16, 20. So we bind and rebuke all hindering spirits of Satan in the name of Jesus. We have to do these things in the name of Jesus. We renounce all ungodly anger and we give no place to the enemy. That's Ephesians 4, 27. We pray to overcome any sifting that Satan would try to bring into our life. We are delivered from the power of Satan unto God. We bind the thief from killing, stealing, and destroying in our life. Lord, remove Satan's seat from our region, city, and nation. That's in Revelation 2.13. Lord, remove every synagogue of Satan from our city, region, and nation. That's in Revelation 3.9. We bind and rebuke all wrath of the devil directed against our life. That is Revelation 12.12. 12. Devil, yes, of the church. Devil, we resist you. Flee. And that's in Jesus' name, James 4, 7. Amen. So the enemy tries to deceive us. And we know he is a liar. He is the father of lies. Amen. So we know the word of God exposes the enemy and God is light. And his word is light and exposes the enemy. And that allows the darkness to be torn away. Amen. So, yes, people are deceived. We've been deceived. Many people have been deceived um, from these lying and deceiving spirits working under the authority of Satan. But in, in um, David prayed against the enemy. And the book of Psalms is filled with the plans of the enemy to overthrow him. His prayers were the key in destroying him and bringing deliverance. Now, this book, um, The Secrets to Deliverance, I've watched a lot of, like, teachings of Alexander Pagani, and he talks about deliverance all the time. His church is, like, an expertise in deliverance, and he even says, like, every so many months, he has to get delivered. He's an apostle. His ministers, his leaders, they all go through deliverance. So if you are in a deliverance ministry, we, we have to make sure we're delivered, Amen. Right? Because if we are doing deliverance, we have to be delivered too. Um, amen. So we, we do have spiritual enemies. And they operate in the uh, kingdom of darkness. But we have to continually to pray. Amen? Because when you pray, we get stronger and the enemy gets weaker. Amen? And so God has given us the power and authority to bind and loose. Amen? So I'm going to just pray. We're going to break some curses and release the blessings of God. Amen. So when you hear these key words, break, breaking out of bondage and release that is to loose, to allow it to operate in your life. Amen. So we are redeemed from the curse through the blood of Jesus. We choose blessings instead of curses and life instead of death. We break and release ourselves from all generational curses and iniquities as a result of the sin of our ancestors Ancestors, in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses on both sides of our family back 60 generations. We break all curses of witchcraft, sorcery, and divination in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of pride and rebellion in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of death and destruction in the name of Jesus. We break and rebuke all curses of sickness and infirmity in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of poverty, lack, and debt in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of rejection in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of double-mindedness and schizophrenia in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of Jezebel and Ahab in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of divorce and separation in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of lust and perversion in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of confusion and mental illness in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from curses of idolatry in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses causing accidents.
accidents and premature death in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all curses of wandering and vagabond in the name of Jesus. We break and release ourselves from all spoken curses and negative words spoken against me, by, spoken against us by others and by those in authorities, and we will bless them. Amen? We break and release ourselves from self-inflicted curses by negative words that we have spoken in the name of Jesus. And we command every demon hiding and operating behind a curse to come out in the name of Jesus. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for destroying our enemies, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father God. That every strategy of hell will be exposed and brought to light, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for your plans. We thank you for your peace, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we are delivered from every trap and every plot against our life, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us power and authority to bind and loose things in our life, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the teaching and the knowledge and the wisdom that you give, Father God. So we speak life over everyone here, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that we will exercise our authority, Father, that you have given us, Father God. You have given us the authority to bind and loose things, Father. So, Lord God, speak to us, O oh God. Reveal those things that we do not know, Father God. Anything that is in our life, in our heart, in our spirits, O oh God, anything that is trying to operate against you, Father, give us wisdom and knowledge, O oh God, to bind the enemy and loose the blessings of the Lord. We thank you, Father. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And that was my word. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Father, we come in authority right now. We, we, yeah, shut it off. Cause it's, let me see. We, shut it off. We come in authority right now and we decree and declare every seat filled, every need met, everything that you want us to have, Father God, that you're releasing it right now. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Lord, do it right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Father God, for covering us with the blood of Jesus, for moving by your spirit, Father, for where the spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. And we give you all the praise right now. We decree and declare, full house, Lord. Full. Do what only you can do, Jesus. We give you praise right now. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour us our blessings. We will not have room enough to contain it. We give you praise right now. In the name of Jesus, every area, Lord, fill it up. Do what only you can do, Father God. And we give you praise. We honor you. We bless your name today. Every sick person, let them say, I am healed. Everyone that's, that, that's going through, Father God, Lord, be with, the, with them. And we give you praise right now. And we honor you, Father God. Honor our steps, Father God. And we give you honor. We decree and declare that people are going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west to this place. This place is going to run over in the name of Jesus. We give you glory right now. You said let the redeem of the Lord say so. And we are saying so right now. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, Father, in the way you would have us to go. And we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. And it is so, it is so, it is so. It is so. We're going to preach your word. We're going to speak your word. We're going to do what you call us to do. And we're going to see you move, Father God. Move by your spirit. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we thank you right now for the liberty to call on your name. Bring them out of the ditches. Bring them out wherever they are, Father God. Bring them out. And bring them into the house of the Lord. We touch and agree right now for the power of God to move strong and mightily, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we will lack no good thing. In the name of Jesus, and we praise you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, thank you all for coming out and have a blessed night. Amen. Amen.